It's hot. Hot? It's hot. I'm hoping this has some instructions because I'm going to need some instructions. Believe me. Oh, look pretty scant on instructions. Uh, I might have to go online for instructions because I can't read Italian. Oh, I can read English. Open the website. <laughs> Another one of these? Hmm. Maybe this is an updated one. Why do I have two? Hmm. I don't know. This is the one I've got. Just download it all if I can. There. Ouch, it's on my foot. That's handy. Six pounds, ten ounces. Can that's how much weight it can take, or three kilograms. Um, and the other thing I'm, I'm really disturbed about this whole unit is I think it's a flaw. This attaches, this whole thing attaches by a quarter twenty void on the other side. I think it should be a three eighths because I think that's how you're going to get it slipping more than you would if you had a bigger, beefier attachment. So having said that, maybe the whole point of it is to not build up weight here, that you accommodate that poor, small attachment by not building up weight on the whole thing. Maybe that's the whole point of it. They don't want a big, beefier attachment because they don't want you to they, whoever they is, because they don't want excess weight is up on here. But still, I would rather have that option however I want to do it and have the, the better attachment here on the back. Okay, now, what, what you do, it would seem, is it's just a sight over the top of this to get a really rough idea of where Polaris is, and that would make it easier to line it up. Here's the setup I had when I was in the yard. Um, setting it up so that I'm kind of familiar with how to do it. I'm not fumbling around in the dark trying to do it. Um, obviously, you will, I will need to align this before I block it by putting the camera on. But, um, and here I've got it pretty, pretty much totally wrong because it's pointing this is pointing to the north and of course the camera to shoot the Milky Way will be pointing towards the south but I had it just testing it out and uh, worked pretty good can you hear that to figure out if it's turning at the right rate the expected rate there's you can get an app can download an app um, for free and this is a let me get it where you can see it better this is a tempo tracker so if I'm pressing this at the same rate I'm hearing this Then you can figure out if it's the right number of, if it's the right rate. Come by this number in the instructions. Here I'm in Adobe Bridge and this shows that I have an exposure time for one of my exposures at 73, I guess it says seconds. So that's this image right here. So double click that and it opens it in Photoshop and then you can see there are no trails that's and this is I think my lens is 21 millimeters focal length 
more than 70 seconds of exposure time. So it works pretty good. This is to help you find Polaris or the North Star. And this is a reticle. When you look into the eyepiece, you'll see these scales and kind of a map for where you need to align the four stars. And you'll need to move the polar finder in the opposite way that you would expect, so it's inverse. And here is where you're supposed to place it on the scale. Here are the all four stars, and so you would consider it aligned. I traveled to a low light area to test out the tracker, instead of working in my backyard, I wanted to go where I would normally use it, where there was low light. And the problem was, <laughs> for me, the wildlife biologist, there were t so many distractions. So at dusk, a bat flew by. And then, here, you can see a big parade of ants. And I've just walked by, otherwise there would be not one toad, but about 12 toads. So I had to, you know, divert my camera to more important things like toads and ants. So here you see all these exposures and this one is particularly bright and that's because Looking at it in Photoshop now, ISO at 6400 for 25 seconds. Now if I zoom in to the center, looks pretty good. I'm just talking about how well it's recorded the light, not the color or anything. And if you look over towards the corners of this image, there's distortion. And there's distortion on the left side as well. So that's to say this lens is not the best, but if you stick to the center, the sweet spot of the lens, it looks pretty decent. I now I'm looking at my exposures of 151 seconds, so just over two and a half minutes. ISO 800, 151 seconds. And if I zoom into the center again, it looks pretty good. And if I zoom over to the right corner, we still see the same lens distortions. Zoom over to the left corner, lens distortions. Of course, that this lens distortions has nothing to do with the tracker. I'm just showing you the two images so you can compare. Back to the center of the image, it looks very good. ISO 800, 151 seconds. So last night at one of my favorite low light locations, I was using this attached by this. And I've already talked about this quarter 20 attachment being a potential problem. This little tripod head works pretty well. My, um, L bracket fits right in here. I didn't even have to use the plate. But I decided I wanted to do I wanted to do a vertical shot. So I dropped my camera down in the notch here, turned it on its side, and of course, wacko. 
as anticipated, perhaps this would be a problem. It was a problem. This all slipped because of this poor attachment. So what to do? In the future, if you're going to shift the weight by such a, an extreme degree, I mean, my camera was light, but it was a big shift in weight. Anticipate that shift in weight and reset the spring before everything slips all out of a whack, because it will. So what I did was I switched it over on the plus side for all that weight, line everything back up after much swearing ensued, and then everything was ready to go again. But, um, yeah, I fear this would be a problem, and it is, unless you anticipate that shift of weight beforehand and make adjustments for it. So other than that, um, this is really fun and I really like the images I got out of it. So more exploring with the tracker will be much fun.